In this video, we're going to be connecting ChatGPT and WhatsApp, and I'm going to be getting it to speak to my roommate for a week just to see if it can really pull off being me. I also want to make this video so that I can show you the real life use case of connecting ChatGPT and WhatsApp and see what it can really provide in the real world. Can it replace humans? Can it be humans? Let's take a look. As you know, a lot of people are hating the fact that they have to be speaking to these robots all the time. Whether it's calling about your credit card, whether it's calling about your phone bill, you're always sent to this automated robot with this automated message. And people get really tired of speaking with these bots. So this is where ChatGPT can come into play with customer service and actually start speaking to people like real people. So as I said, this week, what I did was I connected ChatGPT and WhatsApp. And so that you guys can do this yourself, I wanna run this experiment of how I did it and I'm gonna be walking you through the entire setup myself. So for this, you're gonna need three main things. You're gonna need one, of course, ChatGPT. The second is Timeline AI. And the third is Zapier. And to be completely upfront, a lot of these softwares do require the paid subscription, but I'm gonna show you the version that I did just for free, just in order to run this test. So without further ado, let's get started. So the very first thing that I did was I went to platforms.openai slash API key. And here in the API key section, go to create a new secret. Perfect. Now that you have that set up, don't close the tab because once you close that tab, you're really not gonna be able to see the secret afterwards. Now go into zapier.com and in zapier.com, log in with your account and then go to create zap. And a lot of people get really confused with Zapier because there's a lot of things such as triggers and actions and it gets a little bit confusing. But the really good thing is that there's now AI for the AI. So when you start off, there's gonna be a prompt that's gonna enable you to write a prompt. And what I wrote here is when I get a notification on WhatsApp, send it to ChatGPT and copy its response and send it as a reply on WhatsApp. So then I click on generate and now it'll give me one trigger and two actions. The very first trigger that I get here is from Timelines AI. And this is where the timeline section comes in. So go into Timelines AI and create yourself an account. All right, so now that you got access to Timeline.ai, don't get too complicated with this part. This isn't even the paid section yet. <laughs> So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go into the first trigger. And the very first trigger is the apps and events trigger. Go into events and then click on receive messages. Then make sure that the account is checked on and then shoot a test trigger. It's gonna give you all of these variables such as chat ID, chat name, sender name, sender phone number, recipient phone number, and a whole lot of those. Once you press on test trigger, you're gonna receive a notification. If that's all said and good and the test goes through, we can move on to the next action. And this is one of the most important parts because here is where you connect WhatsApp to ChatGPT. And you're gonna have to connect your own phone number here. So really pay attention. Go to apps and events, then go into accounts. And then here you're gonna wanna add your number. And you're gonna wanna start by adding the number of the area code that you're in. So in my situation, I'm living in Canada, so I'm gonna press plus one, and then I write in my phone number, which I'm actually gonna blur out because I don't want you guys to see what my phone number is. It's gonna then prompt you to a section where it says actions, and here it's gonna ask for details of how the reply is gonna be filled in. So the very first part is the name. Once you click on the dropdown, click on send name, and it's gonna give you the example of some spammer, which I think is kind of funny. After that, go to the link reply form, go to the dropdown again and select message text. Once all this is set up, go ahead and click continue and then go ahead and run a test for this. So earlier this week, I already ran the test and I got a notification from Zapier to my WhatsApp. And the notification that I got was just saying that message was sent successfully. So that's how you know you linked it in properly. After that, we're gonna to go to the very final trigger where WhatsApp's basically gonna learn how to send a message back to you. So here it's gonna say, send a response back to the person that sent me a message. And we're gonna go through the exact same process all over again. So first off, we start by going to app and event, click down on the event form, and then go to send message. Click on continue, and then go into account. Here, once again, it's just gonna prompt you to connect your phone number, and then click on continue. After that, just click on action. And this is where it's gonna fill out the template of how it's gonna respond to the person when they're sending the questions. So pretty straightforward. On template, click on new message on the dropdown. Then in the name form, go to sender name. And then in link to reply, go to message text. And then we're gonna run another test just to see if it's connected properly to WhatsApp. So once the test goes through successfully, we're gonna hit publish. And here's where the paid version comes in, but I'm gonna pay for the paid version just so that I can run this experiment with you guys and see if I can fool my roommates. I'm gonna click on publish. And now we have ChatGPT connected to my WhatsApp phone number. And now it doesn't just stop at this point because I really don't want ChatGPT to just be feeding these really robotic messages to my roommates. Because I think it's gonna be very obvious that it's not me 
once she gets the very first reply. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna copy and paste a bunch of conversations that I've had in the past with my roommate and tell it to really identify the tone of how I speak, uh, how we joke around, all that kind of stuff so they can really get the perception of me. I gave it a few test runs to see how it would respond. After that, I had the ChatGPT pretty fine-tuned and I think it was pretty good to go. So after that, what I did was I ran this experiment. But did you actually know that you were talking to ChatGPT this entire week? Okay, let me redo that. <laughs> no, like, dude, I'm not even trying to get like some kind of insane reaction from you. I just wanted you to know that literally every day except for today, you were talking to ChatGPT. All right. <laughs> Did you know you were talking to ChatGPT? <laughs> yes, because you texted me saying, can I use you in my video? <laughs> but I didn't say that the video was going to be about ChatGPT. No, you just said, can I talk to you with ChatGPT? I was like, our cat. This is the flow. Yeah, the ChatGPT can't be like, by the look of that picture, I think they might be more far gone than Romeo. How does it know my cat's dead? My cat died before ChatGPT hit off. It doesn't have that knowledge. What if I gave it all the information? How would you give it? Okay, now ChatGPT would have sent me a picture saying, Dude, they're selling a six foot long cookie. You think ChatGPT wouldn't say that? I had a few conversations with my roommate, and to be honest, the first day, nothing really seemed that suspicious. But after a certain point, I feel like the messages did get a little bit suspicious. So all in all, it looked like the experiment was a success for a good amount of time. And it's really interesting to think about it because when you really consider it, this is a lot better than having some kind of automated robot sending you messages. But having done that, I just wanted to run a quick experiment to see how you can connect ChatGPT with any third-party applications. And this doesn't necessarily have to stop in WhatsApp. You can make these connections for other third-party platforms. With the clients that we've worked with in the past, you can also connect Airtable with ChatGPT in order to collect leads and message them back out and even create catered messages depending on which person you want to reach out to. AI is gonna reach amazing levels of who you can connect with and how you can connect with them. And I think that this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and remember to like and subscribe. I love making videos for you guys and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.